Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. After sharing my story, I thought it'd be nice to introduce you to one of Athletics Australia's other Indigenous athletes. I first would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land on which we're on today and pay respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people watching us from home. I pay respects to the elders, both past, present and emerging. And I celebrate our ongoing connection to country and the rich diversity that we have across the land. Now I'd like to introduce you to two-time Paralympian Tarita Blake, a proud Dungari woman from Northern New South Wales. Hi, Carl. How are you? Hi, Tarita. How are you? Good. Good to have you online today. Well, thank you. Uh, it's a special week this week, NAIDOC week. Um, could you um, tell us a little bit about what NAIDOC means to you and, you know, what do you do on this week? Oh, mate, I love NAIDOC week. It's one of the weeks where we can actually celebrate um, our actual culture, both, you know, um, learning the history behind, um, you know, our country and community and all that sort of stuff. So I like to learn from our elders um you know the stories um paintings art so i like doing all that sort of stuff um so I, for me it's all about the learning and then also acknowledging um our um success that we've had throughout the last 12 months you know of acknowledging the achievements from you know um, everyone out in the community of what we've done um, yeah, you're right. It, it it is a great week to celebrate who we are, and as a proud proud Dungari woman, um, what does it mean to you to not only you know represent your state and your people, but you know represent the country at the Paralympics? Oh, mate, for me it's actually um, quite special because um, I'm only one of twelve Paralympians. So um, if I'm correct, Paralympics started back in nineteen. 19- how do you say it? 1960. <laughs> um, so, you know, if you look there and now we're in 2020, well, it's quite a small number. <laughs> so I, I, I love telling people that um, I'm only one of 12. Wish we could have more, but yeah. Um, yeah. And you've had many highlights, but what, what are you most proud of um, when, you, when you look back and think about those experiences you've had on the Paralympic world scene? Oh. Oh, mate, there's one too many. Um, I think my first Paralympics back in London would be my highlight. Got into the sports um, six months beforehand. And, um, yeah, I made the team. So I think from there and I've just learnt so much. Um, you know, I tell people, you know, this school kid going overseas not knowing what the world stage is like or, you know, I just I started athletics just in school not wanting to... Um, you know, my dream wasn't to become a Paralympian or anything like that. And then next minute I've started. But like I look back at London Games and just even myself, 17 year old kid, didn't really know like even what I wanted to do when I left school. Like I remember I watched Kathy Freeman as a school assignment in grade four. So that was back in 2004. And I watched, I did an assignment on her and I watched her 400 and I always wanted to run 400. Um, and then I started doing athletics and I was like, oh, Terry, you, you won't be able to go to the Olympics, you know, without being too ne- negative, it was more a realistic thing. And um, as I say, then I found out about, or it's not that I found out about the Paralympics, I knew of it, but I didn't know I would compete in it. And when I found out about that in 2012, or 2011, 2010, I was like, oh my God, I just want to, that's what I wanted to do when my dream came quicker than what I thought it would. <laughs> And, um, you know, you're a, you're a great role model for all young people, but, you know, particularly, you know, young Indigenous athletes maybe aspiring or dreaming about, you know, the big stage. What's your message for them if they're, um, you know, watching your story now? Oh, I just say to them, give it a go, you know. Um, we can do anything just, just as anyone can, you know. If you want to go on run a 400, you can go and run a 400. Um, you know, if you want to make the Paralympics, you know, we can all do it. You know, so I always say, give it a go. You never know what's going to happen. You might change your mind. If um, Indigenous 
kids with um, disabilities want to get out there and have a go at an event that they don't like or whatever, you'll fall in love with it, hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, I always just say to people, give it a go, never know what can happen. My message is to get out there, have a go in the sport and um, see where it can take you. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. Got into athletics and somehow I'm now a Paralympian. So, Ida, what, what are you most proud of being an Aboriginal woman? Oh, I just love, like, the history behind it all, you know. Like, I look at it and I always knew that I was an Aboriginal, um, what could you say, a kid woman um, as a young kid growing up. But for me, it wasn't until I got older and I met my real father and that, and the, just the last few years, I've learnt so much. Um, like for someone like me, I didn't realise the stolen generation was actually in my family until um, I was talking to my father one day and he was like, just explaining it to me. And um, I just love the history behind it. I think um, that's what's really got me really into it. Yeah, Tarita, Kathy being one of our most successful Indigenous athletes, was that something that you looked up to? Oh, yes. I The thing that got me with the 2000 Games is the fact that she um, had the guts to bring out the flag after she had won the um, 400 metres. Um, and as I said, like her running that, her running four, seeing it, um, I fell in love with 400s because of her. <laughs> So, you know, as you say, being an Aboriginal person myself and her just, yeah, I just, yeah, I just love watching her run. Well, Tarita, we talked about the, the history of the Paralympics and um, something that's close to my heart is that um, my father got to be a, go away on those teams and one of the Indigenous athletes that he supported um, was Kevin Coombs. Yeah. Tell me about... Um, you know, the history that you know, and is there any anyone in the history that you look up to? It's funny you mention Uncle Kevin. Um, I met him back in 2016 for the uniform launch, um, and just hearing his story, I was, oh, again, like, he's someone I, um, when I got to meet him and was talking to him, like, just his story. So, yeah, like, knowing he was the first Paralympian Indigenous, and now I'm part of that 12, I think that's what gets it really, you know, like, oh my God, he started and I'm still keeping it. I'm still keeping Indigenous athletes in the Paralympics going. So, yeah, no, my I think that's one of my highlights, actually meeting Uncle Kevin at the Inform launch back in 2016. So, yeah. Uh, fantastic. And I'm sure there's going to be a young girl in the future saying, I got to meet Tarita Blake <laughs> and she inspired me. And and they went on to have a great career. So congratulations, well done. Well, thanks to Rita for joining me today. And um, really thanks for sharing all your, your story, um, what NAIDOC means to you. And I hope you continue to have a good, good week. Thanks for having me, um, Kyle. It's been great talk and thank you, you too.